Uh, we've heard a lot about the water quality or invasive species as ships bring ballast water in from other places around the world. Um, and that and we take our ballast water uh, to other places in the world, they have problems as well. But this is, this is with solution. And uh, we are friends of the federal government, uh, the Coast Guard, and, and a whole variety of organizations. Uh, we at the port, I think the American Great Lakes ports, are completely committed to those solutions. An example would be uh, we've invested in, a, in, a, in an institute with a series of industry partners and a few ports and, and, and a university in, in Minnesota where, where testing is underway for uh, the technologies that will actually solve that problem. Uh, and we would like those technologies to actually be developed and located in places like Cleveland. Um, so perhaps it's an economic development undertaking, but it's certainly a technology and regulatory undertaking to make sure our waters are fresh and clean uh, uh, in, in all regards. So. Lights are coming in and leaving Hopkins a day and also Burke. And as it relates to Hopkins, um, how do we stack up against you know, our competition or can you give it re relevance as it relates to a Pittsburgh or an Indianapolis or, or a larger airport city like an Atlanta or a Chicago? I can try to. <clears throat> Microphone just aren't working for me today. I can try to help you understand. Um, we have about 300 operations per day um, in and out of Cleveland Hopkins, um, which makes us a, um, a um, substantially sized airport. We are a, a considered a large hub airport in the industry. We are the 34th largest airport in the country. Um, in terms of how we compare to our competition, I tend to compare when we're doing our, our strategic um, planning, what have you, um, we compare ourselves to Detroit Metropolitan to the west and Pittsburgh to the, to the east. Um, both are, are competing with us for, um, for our passengers, at least on the fringes of our, of our catchment area. Detroit Metropolitan is one of um, the larger airports. They have about 30 million passengers a year. Um, Pittsburgh is, um, is probably closer to nine and going down. Um, that airport is having substantial problems. The busiest airport in the world is Hartsfield in Atlanta where they have about a hundred million passengers a year. Um, so Cleveland Hopkins has a little ways to go. Um, compared to Atlanta, O'Hare is um, about 90 million passengers a year. Um, so we're a pretty busy airport um, relative to this region. We are the largest and the busiest airport in Ohio. Um, and um, as I said earlier, we are growing for the first time in several years. We experienced an increase um, in passengers. So I don't know if I missed one of your, your questions. Burke Lake, Burke Lakefront has about 100 operations per year. Um, you know, despite the, um, I guess, the, the reputation out there, no, 100, no about 100,000 um, operations, not passengers. 100,000 operations per year. Um, it is a general aviation airport, not commercial, private jet operators. Uh, but we think with some of the um, um, measures we are negotiating that there will be a substantial increase in operations at Burke Lakefront Airport in the next year. Um, a question that, that really applies to, to all the folks. But I want to start with Bonnie. Um, you know, as you, as you look at probably close to a billion and a half, potentially $2 billion worth of, of infrastructure improvements that ODOT's undertaking that really tra traverses uh, the Cleveland community um, through Hopkins down, in, as we discussed, in the waterfront. Um, and you look at the hundreds of acres, thousands even, that that opens up. Um, can you talk a little bit about going back to the 21st Century Task Force on and how you and your colleagues around the state, this is a task force that's made up not just of Cleveland region, but representation across the state, all of its urban centers and its rural communities. Um, how, are they, how are they looking at this differently to, to maximize your transportation systems as the foundations for economic and, and business development in our, in our state as it positions us to compete with our, our other states in the region and across the country? Well, one of the driving forces with, with the task force is, is 
how do we bring the economic development variable into transportation? There's the old saying, if you build it, they will come. Um, the Euclid corridor is, is a, a perfect opportunity, is a, a perfect example of that. Um, we, it's important that we get the input uh, from from everybody, from all aspects, is how we approach it from a multimodal approach, how um, the three of us have to work together. We have a great resource with the lake. If you know, we can take the trucks off of our highway and get them on the lake, put them on the rail, that, that helps our highway system. It helps the congestion. It, it, it helps the, the wear and tear on our roadway. But the unfortunate thing is, gasoline isn't being used and it impacts our revenue. So we have to look at new creative ways of, of how um, we can uh, spend our money and in different ways to, to help have look at a bigger picture and not just focus in on, on highways and bridges to look that we are truly the Department of Transportation, that we're all inclusive, that it's public transportation. And um, we just recently worked with uh, NOACA um, tr uh, trying to get um, the greater uh, the transit authority some additional money because of the funding crisis that they have with the increase in fuel um, and and Howard Mayer who's here you know did a great job on, on trying to assist them um, for this year to um, with some of that we have to look creatively on, on how we can fund transportation so it's it's a challenge ahead and I think the fact that the, the governor was wise enough to put a task force together so that we can look at all of these and as a group, um, not just different segments, but as a group come up with a solution on, on how we approach transportation. Um, I'd like to ask about public-private partnerships. It seems like we're going through a structural change in how transportation is funded. And I want to give each of you a chance to talk about some of your private partners and some of the things that you've been doing to collaborate and some of the, the things that can help some people in this room understand how they can better collaborate with you in doing projects and providing transportation services. Thank you. Let me take that and I'm going to kick it over to my panelists. But, you know, the Greater Cleveland Partnership um, I think now more than ever is is committed to um, reinvigorating the the public private partnerships that this community was built on, you know, so long ago. Cleveland in the 80s was held up as the model in the nation of the strength of the public private partnership as we started to go through our renaissance in the late 80s and the early 90s. Um, and you know, we did a lot of things together to move that, both in in areas of transportation activities, some of the downtown development you saw with our our major facilities like a gateway, like Brown Stadium and the Rock Hall. Um, I don't think we got complacent in the 90s, but I think we were faced with some other challenges. And today you're starting to see those public-private partnerships um, really be strengthened. It's a testament to our political leadership. Mayor Jackson's been very involved, uh, our, our chairman and our board of executives and our, and our team at the Greater Cleveland Partnership. We also managed the Build Up Greater Cleveland program, which is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year. And it was a program that then Mayor Voinovich put together that said, listen, we, we have to do something different in how we address our infrastructure and transportation needs in this community. Um, the port, ODOT, the city of Cleveland, NOACA, the county engineer's office, our sewer district, and our RTA were all the partners that pulled together the Build Up Greater Cleveland program to focus on thinking about these assets differently, um, not only in how we bring them to the forefront and priority, but how do we fund them and how do we start to, to figure out new creative ways um, to push the envelope forward, continue to advocate to our, our friends in Columbus and Washington as well. Um, so from our perspective, we, we love to be that hub representing the private uh, sector in this partnership and, and we'll continue to do so. And, and Ricky, I know you wanted to make a comment. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that as I look over at the table and see my good friends Evan Copel and, and Robbie Anderson. Um, I think there's no better example than airports of a public-private partnership. I don't know that there's anything we could accomplish at, at not just Cleveland Hopkins, but any commercial airport in the country without um, a true active partnership or alliance with, uh, with the airlines there, particularly the signatory carriers, or in our case, a hub carrier in the way of Continental Airlines. Um, and so th I think that's a, a very good example. But to go beyond that, to go, to go beyond the partnership with our tenants, 